Is that called vocal fry? I don't know. <laughs> this is no, vocal, this is fry. vocal fry. Like a Kim Kardashian. What is that that I just did? Oh, oh, oh we're <laughs> Well, I mean, I can edit all this out or make it. Don't, don't edit it. <laughs> we don't want to edit around these parts. Oh Lord. And we are back Hallelujah. with another episode of Dick Talk and Mimosas. <laughs> it's it's been one of those mornings. It has. It I think we should have um, some kind of DTM Boxing Day where we just do all of <laughs> we just like put photos of people on punching bags and tell our stories that way. And then oh, this happened. Um, and so it's what time? It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't have any idea. On a Wednesday. Because a date? it's the only time, it's the only time we had to schedule. And so we are sharing this can, one can <laughs> of two chicks. This yeah. is our life now. We share, we got, I got this uh, Two Chicks cocktail in a can from the Liquor Fountain mm -hmm. on Fountain Avenue. Uh, yeah, we're going to share this. Cheers! Cheers, ladies! <laughs> Cheers with some tears. Let's enjoy our one can Ooh, of I like that. Two Chicks. Mm -hmm. That should be a t-shirt idea. <laughs> Should say that again. Cheers with some tears. Ooh, like a good breakup shirt. Yeah, we're having a rough week, I think, the three of us. But yeah, we're here. We're here to we're have fun. Happen. We're making it happen. We have a very. You can't stop us. You can't stop. You can us. take our recording space away, but you can't stop us, you bitch. Because we are alpha as fuck. Mm -hmm. Suck my dick. Yes. Yes. Suck it all. <laughs> but then you might get cold sores. Like. <laughs> oh my god. That's a that's a whole episode. <laughs> But what is this episode? This episode, Anna, would you like to introduce the topic? Oh, as, as seductively that. as possible. I. <laughs> I'm gonna stare into your eyes while you tell us. Um. So we are introducing the topic of ethical non-monogamy. Because. Um, Say it one more time. One more time. Um, should I touch myself? Yeah, take your sweatshirt off. I don't have a bra. I'm not, I'm, I don't have a bra. <laughs> I'm not going have a bra. I don't think so. Yeah. Quarantine is like no bra zone. No, we're introducing the topic of ethical non-monogamy because... Or um, ENM. ENM, yeah, for short. Um, because as, as you girls know, last week I went on a date with Michael, my friend who I have been... Seeing, I hadn't seen him for like four months, but you know, he's married and you know, his wife needed a break from him for the night and uh, we haven't seen each other. So we got a hotel room and just did the Ooh. deed. I mean, you didn't just do the deed. Uh, did did you get the one? spine breaker edition? Oh my God. They no, invented I things, I think. <laughs> we did. Yeah. You invented new sexual position. <laughs> we, I did things I had never done before. Let's just put it that way. And but, would you care to elaborate? I don't want to do it <laughs> just because no, because like, it's gonna be part of what comes after X rated. Um, oh god. Well my book. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's right, your book, which is yet to be published, but it will one day wink. Yeah, Thank you, said, future sugar daddies. Mm -hmm. Correct. But um I will I say that there was toes involved. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Toes and buttholes. Toes and fucking. Lots of buttholes. Yeah. Lots of butthole stuff. So Ooh. it was a lot of fun. Toe bondage. Lots of lube, I hope. Lots of lube. Yeah. Lots of lots of everything. I mean, we were we were up all night. I think we started having sex around nine o'clock, and Ooh. the last time we had sex was four thirty in the morning. Lord. Like nonstop. Goals. Like literally, like nonstop. But anyways, the whole point is that <laughs> my friend. She's like crawling out the door, and he's like gr dragging her back in. Like, Get back in here. here. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Give me those toes. Or vice versa. Michael's trying to crawl out. She's like, give me that too. <laughs> yeah. No, there came a point like uh, towards the end of the night that we just kind of like both tapped out, and we're like, all right, uh, so let's just like. I don't know, Ice isn't doing the trick anymore. I can't stop. No. The swelling. At some, <laughs> at some point, you need like a vagina break or an anal break, whatever you're into. But well, you also have mouth, to remember that I break. was I was making up for like four months of no sex. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like I could have kept going for like another twelve hours, but the poor guy, like yeah. he's like, oh my god, time out. Yeah. <laughs> the poor guy. Yeah, and he had to go to work the next morning. 
<laughs> yeah. That morning, actually, he had yeah, he's like, I gotta go to work in like two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so back to E and M. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is ethical non-monogamy? So, <clears throat> funny you ask that because last night I was actually trying to like come up with like the perfect definition. I was like googling, you know, like the perfect definition of ethical monogamy. But then I kind of came up with my own. And it's basically when you choose to explore um, different relationships or different uh, sexual experiences with different people, but you do so in an ethical way where everyone is in on what's happening and there's clear communication of boundaries and expectations and there's like no surprises, basically. That's like the easiest way. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> obviously like non-monogamy means like more than one person and ethical means that everyone knows where they stand um in terms of none of the yeah. don't ask don't tell bullshit mm. fuck that because unfortunately that is a type of ethical non-monogamy it's the worst mm. no one that truly identifies as ethically non-monogamous or polyamorous which is under the umbrella of um non-monogamy they fucking hate don't ask don't tell because don't ask don't tell is basically like a pass to cheat kind of and mm. it really is mm -hmm. because like for example let's say let's say your husband he's dying to like you know um i don't know have an affair mm -hmm. and you're like okay that's fine you have your free pass when you go on a business trip just don't tell me oh. so you don't know if it happened or not right and i think that's all in attempt to not have to face mm -hmm what's actually happening like we're not going to have a conversation and mm -hmm. therefore i don't have to acknowledge how this makes me feel mm -hmm. i can just live under the guise of this relationship is something that it's not correct and it also frees you from the consequences because if you remember correctly and i'm gonna like circle back to my ex mm -hmm. the girl that he basically left me for they had a don't ask don't tell policy that mm -hmm. i didn't know about mm -hmm. and that's why our relationship fell apart because when i found out about their relationship she felt threatened by wait, us wait. sorry why wait oh you know what someone just tried to call me oh so this stopped recording like maybe 30 seconds ago, so we gotta go back. I'm sorry. So just okay, start, we start over with uh, the story of your past relationship. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, tell us. Okay, <clears throat> so to circle back about the don't ask, don't tell policy, that is what ended my relationship with my ex because the girl that he was basically cheating on me with, and I say cheating because I didn't know about the relationship. Mm -hmm because they had a don't ask, don't tell policy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So because they had that policy that, and I had a, you know, like a, oh, I want, you know, we're in an open relationship. Like I want to know about the girls you're dating. Right. Their policy freed him from the consequences of having to communicate with me that they were seeing each other. Mm -hmm. Because they had their don't ask, their don't ask, don't tell. Which is unfair because if, if, we're both dating the same guy mm -hmm. and you decide you want don't ask don't tell and i don't decide that like i should this, have that choice yeah this mm -hmm. this guy in the middle like now gets to dictate what he tells me because you want something different than what i want like mm -hmm. it, like everyone has to be on the same page exactly and that's eventually why i fell apart because i found mm -hmm. out about her and she thought she was the only one and mm -hmm. you know she went psycho or whatever but anyways so don't ask, don't tell does not work. And unfortunately, a lot of people, that's how they get introduced to, um, that's why a lot of people have a really bad, um, uh, what's the word, um, idea of what ethical non-monogamy is. Mm -hmm. One, because of, you know, like social media and right. movies and, you right. know, like dumb celebrities, like that whole, like Jada and Will Smith, like that whole thing that happened. Mm. They think you know a lot of people speculate that they were like in a, like an open relationship but someone lied about the mm. their terms or boundaries or whatever mm -hmm. she was in an entanglement correct <laughs> <laughs> correct uh. so i mean i don't know i still don't know like
like, you know, I, hey, if they're in open marriage, then good for them. But I just think, like, well, and what does it fucking out. matter to anyone else? Yeah, like, that's like, our business. Yeah. It doesn't you don't, matter. You don't need to dictate what's right for them. If it works for them. Right. But, Correct. That, but, I, but I do agree with you. I think, isn't the whole point to be fully transparent? It is. But it takes a level of commitment to do that because one, you have to be honest with yourself, super uncomfortable. You're mm -hmm. going to have to have some conversations that are going to be very uncomfortable. Um, but Which I just beautiful. It is. Why should because any that's relationship, where the, yeah, why where should, the growth comes. Yeah. Yeah. Why should any relationship be like so complacent that it's like, this is the cookie cutter of our relationship and we should never like have to venture out of our safety zone. Mm -hmm. Like, with, yeah, with your growth, because I'm not saying that everyone has to be, you know, in any type of relationship. No, mm -hmm. there's no standard for all people, but you should definitely venture out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And if you're into the idea of any kind of relationship with more, with multiple people, mm -hmm. then yeah, you get to, you get to be honest with yourself and honest with people around you. Correct. And mm -hmm. also... Ethical non-monogamy is not an excuse to be a fuckboy, mm -hmm. which a lot of people are using right now because mm -hmm. the term is becoming more mainstream and there's like more, you know, like with social media and I don't watch TV, I don't have a TV, but I've heard that there have been some like TV shows coming out that have like these, you know, like triads or like open marriages or whatever, but obviously the way they're portrayed is very poorly. Right, as anything on TV, like you yeah. shouldn't be like basing yourself off of fictional shit written mm -hmm. for a TV. Correct. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So of course like people like when they think like, oh, like ethical non-monogamy, all they think is like, oh, you just want to have sex with a bunch mm -hmm. of people. Well yeah, that is true. <laughs> but also it's like the connection. Like I can't help it just like I can have multiple best friends. Why can't I have multiple lovers? Mm -hmm. You know? Ooh, good or point. being a parent yeah. that has multiple children, do you love any of them more or less? Or do you love all of your children? I yeah. mean, I am the favorite, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, no one's ever, like, bashed a, a parent for being like, you love all your kids equally. You can't do that. You have to love one of them more. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, when you have, like, more than one children, it's like, what? You're going to have more than one child? Right. <coughs> How could you <coughs> possibly, <video>? yeah. <coughs> Monster, you're going to love multiple children at once, all at the same time? You're never going to be able to give all of your love to all of them. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So... Um, oh, going back to the point, a lot of people right now are using like ethical non-monogamy or the term polyamory to, um, justify their like fuckboy status, mm -hmm. which I fucking hate. Um, because a lot of, so there's like, um, apps for like, you know, this kind of dating, but those apps now, because they're becoming again, like more popular, all these people that basically are just looking to like you know have a bunch of like fuck buddies they're infiltrating these apps mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll even say like on the app they're like just looking for casual sex nothing more not looking for relationship or whatever which is fine because you're establishing you're being, your boundaries yeah but at the same time i have talked to some of those like men where i'm like okay so what is it that you're looking for you know i need to know who you're dating blah blah this and that not like I need to know, but, you know, it would be nice if you were honest about, like, who you're dating, you know, for both our safety or whatever. And they're right. like, oh, I don't need to tell you all that. And it's like, okay, so you just, you're just looking for, like, a bunch of, like, fuck friends and yeah. have, like, mm. no consequences. So yeah, because it eliminates like any kind of, like, intimate emotional connection. Mm -hmm. It's literally like, I don't care about you. You don't need to care about me. Let's just fuck mm -hmm. and get it over with. Like, yeah. I'm well, not looking for that. I'm looking for, like, a connection with a human being. And it also includes sex, maybe. But, it like, you know. Correct. Yeah. And that is... So that is the kind of non-monogamy, which is open relationships. Open relationships fall under the um, idea that you don't have to have, like, a like a connection, like an emotional connection. Like, mm -hmm. open relationships are usually just, like, sexual. But mm -hmm. still, like, you know, both parties know when they're involved. Oh, you just reminded me of a story. Can I interject for like a minute? Yes. Of course. So in 2018, I told this story kind of a, a little while ago on a former episode, but I didn't really explain like the full story. So in 2018, I matched with this hot dude on Tinder. 
and like I was in my single period, I was like horny and just like looking the fuck. You know? <laughs> and his bio, his bio said open relationship, and at the time I didn't really know what it meant, but I kind of figured like, oh, he's probably just seeing other people, like whatever. Right. Um, and so we started, you know, uh, getting intimate uh, on the reg. Um, and then I found out later that he was in an open marriage. Uh -huh. I think I remember this. Yeah. So this is sex god. Um, yeah. I call him sex god because he's Jesus. Yeah. I mean, like, wow. Like, <laughs> I call him sex god because he's Jesus. He's that Jesus. Was, <laughs> he's yeah, like got that the perfectly. body of a Greek god, and he mm -hmm. he rocked my world. And so I remember, like, a few weeks after we started boning, I was like, hey, like, I'm actually looking for a relationship, and, you know, I want to let you know. And he's like, oh, um, yeah, so about that, I'm actually in an open marriage. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, that's what you meant by open relationship on your Tinder profile. <laughs> so that that threw me for a loop, and I was, it took me some time to process that because mm -hmm. I'd never been, like, a married man. You know, it was he said he was her idea, and... You know, she got, I mean, she got off on the idea of him being with other people. I was like, okay. So after like processing that, I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to like be the side chick for a bit. So, <laughs> so I continued to see him for a little while. And then one night we were supposed to, um, you know, have a sex date. And he texted me saying, hey, I'm so sorry, I can't come. My wife is at the hospital giving birth. <laughs> and that's when I found out that he had a wife, that his wife was pregnant. <laughs> so needless to say, I never saw him again. Yeah. Um, and that's been my experience with like the open relationship or ENM lifestyle. Um, it, you know, it was interesting, but I do have a lot of friends, not a lot of friends, but I have a, a few friends who are married in open marriages and it works yeah. really well for them. Yeah, yeah. But see, he should have communicated that with you. Yeah. Because at yeah. the same time, you don't know if he was actually being honest about being in an open marriage. Mm -hmm. He could have just used that as a line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so <clears throat> some of the people that I'm talking to right now, again, because I just started like dating again and dipping my toes back in, some of the like the men that I'm talking to right now, like I'll ask them, um, because I've matched with maybe like three married men. I asked them, like, you know, in our exchange, I haven't met any of them in person. But I do ask, like, you know, would your wife be okay with meeting at some point? You know, because I don't want to be, like, a surprise. I don't want to be, right. um, what's it called? And it's, it's being responsible from your position within this. Because Correct. how many times are there people that are, like, um, cheated on or something? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as, as the mistress, if you will, mm -hmm. like, either A, not knowing that they have a wife, like your situation, mm -hmm. or B... They do know, and then don't say anything, and then mm -hmm. you're equally as guilty in a sense, and sometimes, you know, you're under the impression that, you know, the, the guy told the wife or something, but I mm -hmm. think that that is a good way to navigate, like, if I'm asking you to have, you know, open dialogue with your wife about this, and you're mm -hmm. saying you are, mm -hmm. and... Prove it. Yeah, and, and in a sense, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like prove it, because... You know, you're not asking to, like, do anything crazy. It's just like, yo, like, let's get a cup of coffee and mm -hmm. just, like, keep yeah. it chill. But at least we're all on the same page. And mm -hmm. if everyone's okay with this, like they say they are, then there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And this is getting way ahead into, like, the umbrella and the spectrum of, like, e &M. But I consider, like, now I just discovered this, like, within, like, the last year, what this term means. But I... I mean, I consider myself a polyamorous person, which means that I can have multiple, like, emotional relationships with people, mm -hmm. but there's something called kitchen table polyamory, mm -hmm. which means that I'm able to, like, sit down and have, you know, like, mm -hmm. at the kitchen table, share a meal with, like, the people that I'm, you know, hooking up with, and their significant others. Yeah. So. I, I have friends that are poly, and I had always loved this story where um, he was saying, because... The couple were together and they lived in the house together mm -hmm. um, and she had like another guy over and mm -hmm. whatever and in the morning like the boyfriend that she lived with mm -hmm. made them breakfast yeah which is like beautiful it's like he's like I, I don't have anything to be like worried about like mm -hmm. we're all on the same page and yeah so yeah he was just like hey man good morning like made mm -hmm. you guys some breakfast like mm -hmm. it's great yeah, yeah. and like I, I mean I'm sure you remember this but like 
so before my ex and I broke up last year, we actually had like a girlfriend. What is he doing? <laughs> Trying to get cat food. And I can't, oh, and I can't do any cat interruption. Around. Kitty. I was like, something's <laughs> crinkling back here. <laughs> We did say we were going to talk about felines every so once in a while. <laughs> yeah. I know. We have, we have three of them here. Right we have now. three we're pussies in this house. Well, yeah. I guess six. six. Yeah. My, <laughs> my little girl's going to get gangbanged by your boys. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> They're fixed. They're better. So is she. Even they have better. No balls. Even better. Yeah. They Even do. better. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, if you remember, like, the last year of our relationship, we had, you know, we had, like, a girlfriend. And there would be times where we would practice that like i you know there were times where i would be stuck at work and they would go on their dates and they would like send to me like selfies or one time like i couldn't go to like a um Sex what's party. it called uh no like a work event oh. with him so like, oh, to thought, her okay. or, well no that too i was gonna say i thought i remember a story about that yeah but. no that that too or um like for example like Oh, this happened one time when we were having our brunches. I don't know if you remember. They came over to my place because it was her birthday. So we all spent the night at my place and the next morning, like, I'm like, okay, gotta go because I have to go have brunch with the girls. Yeah. And they went and had, like, brunch on their own. But, yeah. So that is, um, and, you know, like, leading up to the, he, he had other relationships and I was supposed to, like, meet some of the girls. But um, that's kind of, like, where... It's more of like building a community. Like a lot of people would think like, oh, why do you have to know like who they're sleeping with or whatever? It's like, well, it's not like I have to know, but well, I'd like to know that they're in good hands, you know, for I feel like I feel like a good analogy to this is, let's just talk about a monogamous relationship. Mm -hmm. And you have a boyfriend. And this boyfriend has a bunch of guy friends. Mm -hmm. But he's like, you can't meet them. You don't need to know anything about them. Mm -hmm. Would you be okay with that? I wouldn't. Mm. Like, what What do you, like, I want to be part of your life, and this is part of your life. I don't need to hang out with your friends, mm -hmm. but if you're hiding them from me, you're telling me not to ask about who you're going, yeah. like, that's mm. suspicious good, as fuck. Good point, too. So if you just it's take this, thing, yeah, take except this. Except that, you know, maybe, like, this, you know, your significant other is sleeping with that person, but it's the same concept. Right. Like, it's, it's not that I'm, like, um you know, trying to, like, pry into, like, your personal life. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, oh, I just, you know, like, I, I just want to be friends with your wife. Like, what's the big deal? Right. I just no. want to make sure that we're all communicating and under the same understanding. And Correct. Yeah. I was having, you just reminded me of a conversation I had with a friend um, recently, actually, um, because I was in the military, right? And in the military, like, I was in monogamous relationships. Like, I never, you know, like, I didn't live the whole life or anything in the military. <laughs> I was in, like, exclusive monogamous relationships for the most part. And then after I got out of the military, like, years later, I would be approached by people who were still in the military mm -hmm. who had wives. And they'd be like, hey, so we think you're pretty and we want to, like fly you to visit oh, us yes, like to be like our unicorn yeah. mm -hmm. and I was like oh my god like they're still in the military mm -hmm. and but that brings up a point that the military does not recognize ethically non-monogamous relationships mm -hmm. like if mm -hmm. you uh you know have if you get caught doing anything outside of your marriage or whatever mm -hmm. that's considered adultery and right. you can actually get charged and sent to the brig aka prison mm -hmm. for adultery or get kicked out of the military for yeah. adultery that's so fucked up. I was talking to a friend of mine. Military people are yeah. horny. Yeah. yeah, military people are very horny. And I was talking to my friend because I was like, do you think the military will ever recognize that type of relationship dynamic? And I don't think, I don't think the answer is going to be yes for a long time. Um, I mean, it's just people, yeah, like, it's very hush-hush. Like, you can't, like, if you're married, you have to just be. It's because it blurs the lines. Yeah. Because where it's at right now is mm -hmm. very black and white. Mm -hmm. Are you doing anything outside of this? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to that, then it's like, well, is this okay? Is that okay? Does this person know? Does that person know? It, like, it's very hard to define what's right and wrong once mm -hmm. you start getting mm -hmm. that many people involved. And I don't know how, they, they probably don't know how they can like monitor that. In a yeah, sense. Like, do you have both spouses mm -hmm. sign a paper saying that it's okay mm -hmm. to do this? Like, and maybe that would be a result, but maybe there's some legality in why they can't ask that. So, I don't know.
but it, it also is technically like you can't marry like I think um because like once you marry more than one person it's considered polygamy mm -hmm. and I think polygamy is still um illegal in most states yeah I'm you can't sure. get married well isn't there I don't know what about people in Utah I don't know right Utah has, has its own set of rules they have its own set of rules <laughs> Can no, you have rules. more than one wife? Yeah. I'm yeah. married a donkey. You can, you can have like 20 <laughs> wives. <laughs> That's how you really get that donkey yeah. dick. And like porn is like not allowed or something. I don't right. Know. It's like illegal. Yeah. I will say like I've never been in a polyamor polyamorous or ENM relationship. However, there was a point in time after I met Sex God that I had considered like do would I be in this kind of relationship because I know because we had that conversation. We, yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Hey, so what do you think about like what you know?" I asked for advice because I wasn't sure. I think I was talking to someone and I was about to enter a relationship, and I was actually broaching the topic of E and M with them. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, we decided to just be monogamous. But it did cross my mind, like, would this work? And I don't know if it would work for me because like, and, I and this is a perfect time to say, but that's a whole nother episode, which we literally mm -hmm. wrote down in our list of ideas for episode topics. Mm -hmm. Should Jen become a unicorn? Question mark. <laughs> the episode. But see, ideas. the thing is, like, okay, <laughs> right? I'm sure there has been, and I know, I know you have had this before, that moth. Um, <laughs> where I do believe that there's a little bit. First of all, I'm not saying that monogamy is wrong. I think that if you're monogamous, like be monogamous AF. But I do believe that everyone has a little bit of like non-monogamous tendencies because how many times, <laughs> how many times have you maybe like started to date two people or, and then you're like, oh my gosh, they're both. Now I have to choose. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, I have to like make a choice. Mm -hmm. And it's like. Well, you don't have to, but, you know, society tells you that you do, or mm -hmm. you're afraid to explore, you know, with both people. So, um, yeah, and I mean, look at, I mean, why do cheaters cheat? Because mm -hmm. they're attracted to multiple people. Mm -hmm. But it's more, and this is a fucked up part, it's more non monog or ethical non monogamy is more frowned upon than cheating is because like look at all the people that cheat like in social media like celebrities or whatever they're forgiven like once they you know people forget about their wrongdoings like once they apologize and they go to therapy and you know they buy their spouses like multi-million dollar rings <coughs> Kobe Bryant <laughs> and um but yeah but when people are like you know when they come out as like non monogamous people are like oh that is disgusting how dare you be in a relationship where you communicate and mm -hmm. all your spouses or like all your partners mm -hmm. are, you know, in agreement and consent to this type of relationship. Mm -hmm. So that brings, yeah. that brings up an interesting point because, you know, in the past when I've been single and, you know, mingling, mm -hmm. you know, I've dated more than one person at yeah. a time and, and mm -hmm. I've, I've had experiences where I was like, Oh, you know, I really like this person for this quality and then I like this other person for that quality. Mm -hmm. But my fear, I think, is like, oh, I don't think they would go for it. Um, also, you know, I think about how I would feel. I'd be like, oh, I'd probably be really jealous if they saw someone else. So, you know, I always go back to, like, my default of monogamy. Yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, again, that's something that if, like, if you really wanted to try it, like, you would like work through it because again like there was a point where like I was jealous or jealousy <clears throat> um a myth about this is that like jealousy is not a factor in like non-monogamy non but it is but how you deal with it is like completely different than like you know your average person yeah like you actually like sit with your feelings you um pinpoint where they're coming from you work through them you talk them over with your partner like mm -hmm. it's a completely different um I would say it's like maybe a little bit like more evolved in a regular relationship because the level of over communication that you have to do mm -hmm. and also like mm -hmm. vulnerability because you have to be like completely raw like okay like this is how I feel mm -hmm. and this is how it's making me you know this is how it's making me feel inside and then like you work through that mm -hmm. so and I almost think it's ugly and beautiful all at once yeah mm -hmm. and I think that it's honestly um like beautiful in the sense that you allow 
everyone to be who they are. Mm -hmm. And in a situation where you maybe are, you know, stuck between two guys that you're like, oh, I don't know, I like both of them. And I like this quality and this one and this quality and this one. But then I choose one of them. And now am I going to try to make that person fulfill those other things that that other person had? Or can I just let everyone be themselves and we all get to deal with Mm -hmm. who we are and the things Mm -hmm. that are, you know, coming up for us instead of trying to push it onto that other person. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's like the beauty of like variety because not everyone's going to fit like one mold. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of like unrealistic (laughs) when people say like, oh, this person is my everything. They're everything like I ever wanted. I just always want to be like, is it really? (laughs) Because like, for example, um, one of my friends that's getting married, I'm not going to say names, um, One of his fantasies was always to have a threesome. Like, always, always, always. So, of course, he got married, and he's like, that is a fantasy that I will never have because my wife will never go for it. It's like, oh. Well, it's like, if you say so. I mean. Never say never. Yeah. If you've committed to the fact that that's never going to happen, then yeah, Yeah. probably not. But also, you know, I don't know. It's Some things, you know, I guess, too, in a sense, you just decide aren't important enough. Like, Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's a fantasy I'll never have, but what I am getting is worth it, and I'm not willing mm-hmm. to give that up. So I'm willing to give up the, the fantasy of a threesome in order to attain all this other, you know, all this person mm-hmm. that I don't want to lose. So sometimes yeah. I think it's okay, too. I mean, I'm not trying to push one or the other. But. Yeah, no, but the, what I was trying to say is that, like, when people say, like, oh, this person is my everything, it's like, well, they really are not because they're not fulfilling every single, they're not checking off every single box of what you require. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's okay. I'm not saying it's wrong, mm-hmm. but and it's the fun thing, being, the fun like, thing with this, Yeah, the fun thing with this, too, is you get to recognize – that you don't check off other people's every single box either. Correct. Mm. So, like, you are missing things that Mm -hmm. someone else would ideally want. Checkmate. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's my contribution. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. So, that is kind of, like, a quick intro to it. And um, I've asked my friend if him and his wife would probably, like, be um, interested in, uh, you know, coming on one of the... Yes. Oh, so special guest. Yeah. yeah. That would be fun. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so you can hear we, from we Michael. We love them Michael. already, so they should. Yeah. I mean, you've met Michael. Yes. Yeah. I want you to meet the wife because. Yeah. I know. I feel like I've vicariously met her just via stories and Instagram <laughs> or something. But yeah. yeah. And they have a cat, right? Yes, they do. Yes. What's his name again? They have a kitty. So cute. Catoose. Catoose. That's yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he wants to like have like a cat circus. He's like, yes. he's like a bunch of people bring their cats over. Can we have a cat costume party? Oh, cat fashion that? show. Because I think if they're all in costumes, it can't really fight each other. They're, all just, <laughs> they're just trying to get out of costume. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Have you seen? This is off topic, but I think it's like a filter on like maybe Snapchat or Instagram or like um, TikTok of like the the cat face. Um, filter. Oh, right? yeah. Like, yes. people, like, they, they show yes. the cats and, the and they're cats all freaked panic. out. Yeah. Uh, Katus is a boy, right? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. so can Andy and Celine be little cat doms and then all the boys <laughs> have to be the little slaves? <laughs> I'll put a little leather collar on. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I think that just about wraps up that topic, right? Are there any yeah. saved ones? I mean, it doesn't wrap up the topic. It's yeah, like, I think it wraps up the introduction two and three because introduction. there's. Yeah, yeah, there's quite a bit. I mean, but there, that's there's a whole other episode. That's a whole other episode. And there's so much that can be talked about, but that's you know basically like the whole you know sprinkle starter on, on set. The, yeah. Well, thank you, Sensei Anna, <laughs> <laughs> for showing us the way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're gonna. Well, we already finished this two chicks. This can. one can. This one can. We finished one can it to rule them minutes. all. Uh, we got at the Liquor Fountain, 5203 Fountain <laughs> Avenue. Avenue. They're also on Instagram at the Liquor Fountain if you want to check them out. They have an app as well if you'd like to get your booze delivered. Mm-hmm. I might just have more of this two chicks 
canned. I would delivery. I would like to um, challenge our friends that go to the liquor fountain too to take like a selfie by their amazing dry erase board and tag DTM and the liquor fountain on it because they have this little dry erase board outside their oh, front yeah, door and the they always have the thing. best shit written mm -hmm. on it. So yeah, go the next time you go there to buy something, take a little selfie mm -hmm. in front of their dry erase board and put it on Instagram or something and tag us and tag the liquor fountain because we would all enjoy it. And last but not least, we'd like to thank our supporters and also thank you to our patrons on Patreon. We could not do what you do, what we do without your support. And we have a lot of amazing exclusive content on Patreon, bonus material and early access to episodes. So if you'd like to become a patron, you can click the link in our Instagram bio. It says Patreon and become a patron. And we show our titties. <laughs> booties <laughs> the things that instagram will not allow yeah so mm. well. your horrible woman body in public shouldn't see that yeah nipples. you should be ashamed Ew. of that no women nipples yeah Ew. i mean men can show their nipples instagram That's doesn't like it when that, women yeah. celebrate their bodies yeah, yeah. so how dare you do that mm -hmm. so check out amanda's beautiful photography <laughs> on our patreon <laughs> and our beautiful nipples <laughs> And soon to be merch. Yeah. Soon to be merch. Stay and tuned. lots of fun stuff. See you soon. All right. Bye. Yeah, no. Suck some dicks. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Let me retitle that. Oh, it's uh, your back. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's my hip because I'm 75. <laughs>